For as long as human beings have looked up at the night sky, one question has burned brighter than all the stars combined. Are we alone? It's a question so old that it hides behind myths, religion, and science all at once. Yet, every telescope, every space probe, and every quiet night spent staring into the dark sky all point toward that same mystery. Could someone, somewhere, be looking back? In recent years, this ancient curiosity found fresh fuel when astronomers announced a startling discovery. A faint but unusual signal coming from Proxima Centauri, the closest star to our solar system, just four and a quarter light years away. To put that into perspective, that's roughly 25 trillion miles. If you were to drive there at highway speed, say 60 miles an hour, it would take you more than 45 million years. Fly in a commercial jet? You'd still be traveling long after every civilization on Earth had risen and fallen several times over. And yet, in the scale of the universe, Proxima Centauri is practically next door, the cosmic equivalent of your neighbor waving from across the street. Orbiting that star is a small, rocky planet known as Proxima b, a world that seems eerily familiar. It's roughly the same size as Earth, sits in what scientists call the habitable zone, and has become the most promising candidate yet for what some call Earth 2.0. So when astronomers detected a strange, precisely tuned radio signal from that same region, excitement exploded. What if this was not just static from space, but a message? Now the signal in question wasn't a loud hello echoing across the galaxy. It was subtle, a whisper hiding among billions of cosmic noises. Using advanced radio telescopes capable of picking up the faintest energy waves, scientists noticed something odd, a narrowband signal, meaning that it appeared in a very tiny, precise range of frequencies. Now, this might sound boring, but to astronomers, that's huge. You see, most natural cosmic sounds, from stars, black holes, or exploding galaxies, come across as wide, messy bands of frequencies. They're like static on an old radio. But a narrowband signal is different. It's sharp, focused, and deliberate. It's like hearing one clear piano note ring out in the middle of a chaotic orchestra. And that's why scientists paid attention. Because, as far as we know, only technology produces such clean, precise signals. Nature is beautiful, but it's messy. Machines, on the other hand, are tidy. So, when a narrow signal cuts through the noise of the universe, it triggers a fascinating question. Could this be artificial? At first, many thought that it might just be human interference. Maybe a satellite, a radar echo, or a stray cell tower bounce. But when the team checked, they found no easy explanation. The signal didn't match any known Earth-based technology, nor did it behave like the usual natural emissions. And here's what really raised eyebrows. The signal seemed to originate from the exact direction of Proxima Centauri, specifically from its habitable zone, where Proxima b lives. When news broke of this quote-unquote alien-like signal, the public imagination went wild. Headlines screamed, we are not alone, and social media lit up with theories. Some said that it was a cosmic postcard. Others joked that aliens had finally paid their phone bill. But excitement is one thing, proof is another. Because this wouldn't be the first time that humanity thought that it heard something quote-unquote alien. Back in 1977, astronomers detected the famous WOW signal, a strong, mysterious radio burst from space that never repeated. For decades, it fueled debates and documentaries, but no one ever heard it again. To this day, its source remains unknown, and many suspect that it was just a freak natural event. Scientists learned from that episode that excitement without verification can lead to false hopes. So, while the Proxima b discovery thrilled astronomers, they knew better than to jump to conclusions. Could it be interference from our own planet? 
Could it be a quirk in the telescope's electronics? Or perhaps a previously unknown natural process from the star itself? Dr. Michio Kaku, the theoretical physicist who often appears in such discussions, called it, quote, a jackpot for astronomers. But he too warned that every extraordinary claim demands extraordinary proof. The real test wasn't finding the signal once, but detecting it again and again from multiple observatories under different conditions. That's what science does best. It doubts itself until the evidence leaves no other choice. So how do astronomers even quote unquote listen to the universe? Unlike a regular radio that tunes into FM stations, space telescopes capture electromagnetic waves from billions of miles away. These waves carry clues about what's out there, the birth of stars, the spin of planets, or even, possibly, messages. The method used for detecting the Proxima B signal involved something called phased array multiplexing, a fancy term meaning multiple telescopes working together as one big ear. When you combine signals from dishes scattered across the globe, you create what is effectively a single super telescope with higher accuracy. To put this all into perspective, if one of these telescopes could detect the faint hum of a power line in another city, the entire network combined could pick up a single spark from a match on the moon. That's how sensitive they are. And yet, even with such precision, the universe is an ocean of noise. Every second, countless stars, planets, and cosmic events are sending out signals, bursts of energy, magnetic ripples, and random interference. The trick lies in filtering through this chaos to find anything that looks deliberate. That's where narrowband detection comes in. The signal from Proxima Centauri was so precisely tuned that it resembled a broadcast, not in the human sense of voices or music, but in its focused simplicity. But let's all pause the excitement for a second here and let's ask the vital questions. What would it actually mean if this signal came from intelligent life? And perhaps more importantly, could life even exist on Proxima b? Scientists believe that Proxima b might have conditions similar to Earth, but similar is a slippery word. Proxima Centauri, the star it orbits, is a red dwarf, smaller and cooler than our sun. That means that its habitable zone is much closer in. Proxima b circles its star so tightly that a year there lasts just 11 Earth days. It might even be tidally locked, meaning that one side always faces its star in permanent daylight, while the other is trapped in endless night. Now, that's extreme. On one side, you could fry an egg on the rocks. On the other, you'd freeze solid in seconds. But between those extremes, there might be a narrow twilight band, a zone of balance where liquid water and, just maybe, life could exist. Now, if that doesn't sound fascinating enough, consider this. Radiation flares from Proxima Centauri are powerful enough to strip away parts of a planet's atmosphere. So, if life survives there, it must be incredibly resilient, stronger than anything on Earth. Maybe underground, maybe underwater, or maybe built differently altogether. So yes, life on Proxima b is possible, but not easy. And that's exactly what makes it so interesting. If any civilization developed there, they'd be survivors, beings shaped by fire and ice, learning to thrive where no human could. But is that what we're hearing? Or could it still be something else? The temptation to say, we found aliens, is irresistible. But science works like a courtroom. It needs undeniable proof. For every theory suggesting an artificial source, another scientist proposes a natural explanation. Perhaps the signal came from stellar activity, a magnetic pulse, a flare, or plasma movement near the star. Maybe it was a glitch in the telescope's software, or a reflection from an Earth-orbiting satellite that just happened to line up perfectly with Proxima Centauri. To make matters even more complicated, radio telescopes are so sensitive that they can pick up a passing plane 
a microwave oven in a nearby building, or even the electronics inside their own systems. A few years ago, an observatory in Australia thought that it had detected mysterious signals from space, only to discover that they came from scientists opening the staff kitchen microwave. That's why researchers insist on verification. Multiple observatories must detect the same signal under the same frequency from the same direction over time. Only then can we start to whisper the word artificial. And even then, we must ask, if it is artificial, does that automatically mean aliens? Not necessarily. It could be one of our own satellites bouncing radio waves in strange ways, or even a classified signal that we're not supposed to recognize. So yes, the discovery is extraordinary, but extraordinary discoveries require patient minds and skeptical hearts. Sometimes the most interesting part of such discoveries isn't what they reveal about the universe, but what they reveal about us. Think about it. For thousands of years, we have built temples, observatories, and telescopes all for one purpose, to make sense of the unknown. Every time we hear a whisper from the stars, we see a reflection of our own curiosity. The search for extraterrestrial life is, in many ways, the search for ourselves, for meaning, for connection, for proof that we're not just cosmic accidents floating in the dark. When the Proxima B story broke, people didn't just ask, is there life out there? They also asked, what will we do if there is? Would it unite us or divide us? Would nations compete to make contact first? Or would we finally act as one species under one sky? These questions matter because science doesn't exist in a vacuum. A confirmed alien signal would shake religion, philosophy, and even politics. Schools would rewrite textbooks overnight. News channels would never stop talking the very definition of human might evolve. What makes this age of astronomy so remarkable is how technology lets us listen better than ever before. Just a century ago, we could barely track the planets. Today, we can detect the faint heartbeat of a star billions of miles away. Take the James Webb Space Telescope, for instance. It can capture light that has traveled for over 13 billion years light that began its journey when the universe itself was still a child. If you were to compare the Webb telescope to the old Hubble, it's like replacing a candle with a laser. It sees through dust, peers into the past, and lets us glimpse the earliest galaxies ever formed. Do you know that some of the galaxies Webb has already spotted existed just 300 million years after the Big Bang? To put that into perspective, that's like watching the first spark after the lights came on in the universe. These tools don't just make astronomy cooler, they make it more human. They show that every time we invent something new, our universe grows larger. So, what if the Proxima B signal turns out to be real, truly artificial, truly from another civilization? Well, then we'd be living through one of the most important moments in human history. A turning point as significant as the discovery of fire or the wheel. But what if it isn't? What if it's just cosmic static? A random pulse that fooled our instruments? Then it would still matter. Because even in being wrong, we learn how to listen better. Science is built not just on answers, but on better questions. Even if this signal fades into silence, it reminds us that the search is far from over. There are more than 400 billion stars in our galaxy alone, and many have planets like Proxima b. If only a tiny fraction of them host life, that still means millions of possible neighbors. Maybe someday one of our signals will reach them, and they'll feel what we feel now, that trembling mix of fear, wonder, and hope. At the heart of all of this lies a simple truth. The universe doesn't owe us answers, but it gives us endless mysteries. Each discovery, whether it's a signal, a new planet, or a glimpse into the early universe, pushes us to ask better questions. 
And if we listen closely enough, not just with our machines, but with our minds, we might one day realize that the greatest discovery isn't out there at all. It's the realization that the desire to know, to understand, to reach beyond our limits has always been what makes us human. So maybe Proxima B isn't Earth 2.0. Maybe it's something even better, a cosmic mirror reminding us that curiosity itself is the closest thing we have to infinity. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you loved this video, do us a favor. Make sure to leave a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe, and check out our other videos like this on our channel.